the home of Aston Villa, the great traditionalist and always an important cornerstone of the Football League through the 100 years of its existence. William McGregor, founder of the Football League, he'd had strong Villa connections and what teams they were back there at the turn of the century. So Villa, of course, have had their great times since then. Indeed, their trophy cupboard is almost full. And back in 1982, they triumphed in the European Cup final itself. For several years, though, the city of Birmingham has been made to look from afar at the football glories enjoyed by Merseyside, Manchester and London. And now this Villa side is back where most football men and women believe they belong, in the first division. Today they test their growing strength against Everton. That's our feature match. Also today, goals and thrills from elsewhere in the first division of the Barclays League, including Liverpool against Coventry City. Here at Villa, manager Graham Taylor, not content with taking Watford from the fourth division to the first and then on to Wembley, he's behind this Aston Villa revival. And yet when he arrived here, he called the place a shambles. Well, uh, you're certainly playing side. I mean, in, in that respect, uh, Brian, I think that happens to all big clubs, that when they do get on the slide and a lot of things go, and Aston Villa is no different to any other club that finds a hard time. It's, uh, a lot of discipline, standards, excess. They go out the window because... Uh, people don't really know what's happening and uh, that's exactly what had happened at the club so we had to stop that first of all and get it changed around and get promotion at the same time which fortunately we achieved well we're looking forward to a special game today against everton uh you've got alan mattinelli back in your side starting for the first time for a month after injury yes well i mean he started the season tremendously well and uh, he was really on a high when uh, he scored a lot of goals scored six goals in the first four games in fact and scored very good goals as well but more than that he's a tremendous influence in the dressing room personality in his own right and uh, I think that's very important to have that kind of uh, person and that kind of player about. We did miss him, we had two games we've lost this season have both been by 1-0 and fortunately Alan was uh, fit enough to be substitute against Charlton uh, last week, came on at half time and turned the game for us, scored a very good goal but made an excellent one, I mean it's tremendous dribbling ability and hopefully you know it will cause Everton some problems this afternoon along with Tony Daly. Well, let's look at McAnally's contribution Last weekend then at Charlton, with Charlton leading by a goal to nil, McAnally coming on as a substitute, hits the post there, but manages to get the rebound in to make it 1-1. Not content with that, with Charlton having gone ahead again, what about this for a bulldozing run then by the substitute McAnally, pass one, pass two, and then a lovely pass into the path of David Platt, and Villa came away with a 2-2 draw. Well, the Villa team also includes Derek Mountfield today, one of three centre-backs in the side. A significant day for him since he joined Villa in the summer from today's visitors, Everton. Well, it's a Villa side that's already got a settled look to it, which has been improved back by Chris Price, bought from Blackburn Rovers, and in the midfield by the return of Gordon Cowans after three seasons in Italian football at Barry. Everton, for their part, getting an early return from Tony Cotty, the £2 million man from West Ham. Six goals so far, including two against Southampton. No, still being played rather in front of Southampton's defending. But Cotty can turn here. Oh, Tony Cotty! A rough... Sharp. Cotty! They're turning on the style now. The Everton side getting back into shape with the return of Kevin Ratcliffe in defence. He missed the last half of last season with a groin injury. Uh, Dave Watson and Trevor Stephen back in action too. But Pat Nevin is still on crutches after a knee problem. With one win in their last five games, Everton now look for an upswing in their fortunes. Terry Darracott, a lively Merseysider, he's in charge today. Manager Colin Harvey due to leave hospital this weekend after a second hip replacement operation. And I'm sure everybody in football sends warm good wishes to Colin for a complete recovery. It's one of the great sights in football. This big Villa Park Stadium with a good first division crowd in it. Sadly for Villa though, they've yet to win here in the league this season. And it's Villa in the Barrett and Blue strip will be kicking off attacking the goal to our left Everton today in uh, a shirt of blue and white stripes and blue shorts Villa in fact have won only one league game all season that's at Arsenal in a pulsating game there so both sides you feel could do better this season they've been doing 
both no doubt looking to get firmly back on the winning road here at Villa Park today. Peter Reid, who will have a lot to say in the midfield for Everton. Kevin Ratcliffe. Everton's everywhere will be delighted to see him back in action. One of the best centre backs in the whole of the football league. Graham Sharp. Nicely cut out though by McInally. Throw to Everton. Their 4-1 victory against Southampton last week. Rather the week before last should really have uh, set them up now and made them feel that better things are on the way. with the throw. Free kick to Bell. And Sharp with the Scotland squad for the World Cup qualifier against Yugoslavia in midweek, although he didn't get on. Short Gray, a very withdrawn role on that left-hand side for Aston Villa. Stuart McCall. Snowden. Came towards Potty. Came back nicely by him to Vanden Howe. Stevens made a break away on the left. Fed nicely by Vanden Howe. Trevor Stephen looking for Potty. Oh, and this kick there by Keown. Comes to Vanden Howe again. Sharp poised at this post. Potty hoping to reach it. And Cowan sliding it away for Villa. Oh, feet were flying there a little bit, but Stuart Gray getting daily. A chance now for him to stretch his legs with McAnally waiting in the middle for Aston Villa and into the side netting. Splendid move back, but deserves a better finish from Tony Daly. Good work by Stuart Gray leading up to this, who really fit into his challenge. Daly's pass just a little too casual there with McNally in such a good position in the six yard area. Watson beats Daly in the air. Mount 
Hatfield versus Sharp. Sharp won that one and found Heath. And then goes for a lovely return ball. Graham Sharp again looking to get into a shooting position. It comes instead for Adrian Heath. Crossed in by him. And on the far side, Trevor Stephen arriving late. And it goes behind with a very good moving beat again by Everton. Sharp and Heath combining well. And then as the cross came in from Adrian Heath, Trevor Stephen arriving late. the six-yard area. No defender likes these. And Villa were breathing again as that went past the far post. And Potty almost there just to prod it in. Sighted there, the goalkeeper. Yes, indeed, it took a clear deflection on the backside of Keown, and Everton a little unlucky not to get a, a corner. First throw, Stuart Gray with it. Gordon Cowns. Alley. A bit of space for Price to get in, maybe. No, oh, McInally's going his own way. Page. Good play. Bringing Price in again. That's a lovely cross coming in. Oh, a spectacular goal by Daly. A stupendous Aston Villa goal there by their number seven, Tony Daly. Made by Price, who has his own little celebration. A glorious goal that puts Villa into the lead. Here's Price with a splendid cross, and you won't find a better goal than this. Met on the volley by Tony Daly, and a goalkeeper of the caliber of Neville Southall. Not a prayer for him. 1 0 Villa. Well, that's really got the Villa fans going. The scoreline Aston Villa 1. Everton at nil. So some celebration on the Villa Terraces as Derek Mountfield gets some attention. Well, he'd only scored one goal previously this season, and I doubt if ever he scored a more spectacular one than that. Home bench, encouraged by Tony Daly's goal. Everton bench knowing that there's just nothing you 
can do about a strike like that. Half-time whistle. And an afternoon of full commitment here at Villa Park. And that sparkling moment for Villa when Tony Daly scored that stunning volley to put their side into the lead following an excellent run and a very good cross indeed from the fullback Chris Price. You fancy there's a good deal more hanging on this match in the second half. But the half-time score here at Villa Park, still buzzing about that Tony Daly goal, is Aston Villa 1, Everton at 0. The game in the first half might feel a little aggrieved starting this second half down, but Tony Daly's goal is the one that separates the two sides. And now Everton have a real contest on their hands. Here's Trevor Stephen, and... That's not the best of starts for him. It'll be Chris Price, who made that goal with the cross for Daly. With this throw now for Aston Villa. Remember, Villa have yet to win a league game at home this season. division into the first last season you always felt that Villa would have made things so much easier for themselves had they uh, strung more convincing results together at home Stephen. Not starting where they left off and pushing Villa back now Stephen handling with Gage Kevin Gage getting it away well. Ratcliffe. Down on the bench now, the uh, Villa manager, Graham Taylor, having spent the first half up in the breakfast box. Stephen. Sharp waiting at the far side. Just knocked off the top of his head. A very important jump there by Derek Mountfield. But it concedes the corner for Everton. Sharp coming off his man. Played here for Ian Snowden. Speed again, and McAnally certainly is. Couldn't quite get the ball through the flat. I think he's ready that Chris Price is okay. And the worst for that tumble. And here come Everton again with Stuart McCall. Stopped by Cowens. Helped by Gage. Reed going in there. That could well be a yellow card. Peter Reed. Not happy with that decision, and Alan Evans acting as a peacemaker there, which is very sensible. One old head trying to soothe another one. And let's uh, uh, look at it again as Reed came in, and the referee has shown Peter Reed the yellow card. pictures it's hard to see that he uh, had any option at all tough little character that Peter Reed is 
Somebody playing it on. Mountfield almost getting in there. Flat! And it's two. No, the flag is up. The flag is up. It won't count. David Flat disappointed. And Everton stay in the battle. All played forward. Good chuck there. Mountfield almost got in. Flat. And it's Mountfield, the former Evertonian, who is offside. Now shot. Eight. So three point four three gets it. Okay. Four. Well, a crowd doing uh, Peter Reed after that booking. Certainly won't worry uh, Peter Reed. Now Snowden. And McCall with a flying header getting in before Mountfield. Wide of the Villa goal and a goal. Kick. Everton continue to put the more promising moves together. But remain a goal down. by Watson and by Keogh. Inside the dugout has come outside now. Maybe he feels that he needs to get things moving a little bit. And indeed, Tony Daly doing just that. Things falling just a little bit into a trough at the moment. into the call. Sharp. Reed. Potty might get it back to Reed. Oh, Cage is in there doing a good job. Ratcliffe standing firm as indeed as Watson. Ratcliffe in there again. It might come for McAnally now though. Inside is Platt. piece of goalkeeping by Neville Southall. They were within an ace of getting that second important goal then, Aston Villa. And here's Price. Cross is a good run. Daly stopped again by Southall. Two astonishing pieces of goalkeeping there by Neville Southall. And there's another one. But the first two saves were quite exceptional. One from David Flack. McAnally played it in, flat, and a great reaction there by Southall. And then the other one, after Price had made such a good run, and it comes to Daly on the far side, and there's that man Southall again. And now he faces more problems, as the ball is played in, and shot on the turn, and gloriously into the back of the net that time by Platt, and there was nothing Southall could do about it. 
great spell by Aston Villa after Everton had fought and fought and fought to get back into the game. Two superb pieces of goalkeeping by Southall kept them afloat. And then the great shot there by Platt. Not even Southall could stop that. And Villa gets some breathing space with that second goal. To the delight of their fans around Villa Park. Aston Villa 2, Everton 0. against Platt. Second goal of the season then for David Platt, the former lad from uh, Crew Alexandra. Taylor to breathe a little bit now. As Everton looks quite menacing for so much of this game, and yet find themselves two down. And spare a thought, of course, for the Everton goalkeeper Neville Southall. Terrific. Beaten by two shots that were absolutely unstoppable after he performed such heroics to keep Everton in the game. tried another of those volleys but didn't come off for him Gray playing it in McAnally oh a chance went there Flats playing it across the ball still not out of play but now it is by Kevin Ratcliffe McAnally will be furious himself that was a real big golden opening to make it 3-0 for Aston Villa but a corner with it. McAnally. In comes Reed. McAnally. Reed getting stuck in there against Big Scott. And a free kick given to Everton. And it's McAnally all smiles. Brings him down. something here Cotty trying to get in came off the legs of Spink who knew very little about it Everton has had a longer game and uh, that's really when you know it's not your day when you get hit by a goal the like of which Tony Daly scored in the first half and then Cotty through there and it comes off the goalkeeper's legs can't take anything away from this Aston Villa performance. Stuck to their task magnificently and they've really made some chances. Reed. 
County. There's Ratcliffe. A bit of space for him. Looking for McCall on the far side. Green again. And a foul there by Ratcliffe. And that could be another good one. Gage, the unfortunate victim. But he gets up straight away, having looked as though he was poleaxed a moment ago. But I think the rapid recovery of Gage will not save Kevin Ratcliffe from the yellow card. seven minutes left and Villa leading 2-0 the uh, Villa fans beginning to relax a little bit and the referee going across now to have a word with Graham Taylor who perhaps has become a little too animated on that Villa bench and is being told to sit inside <laughs> all done in good humor and <laughs> Graham Taylor still making his point oh, but you'd think they were 2-0 down rather than 2-0 up maybe quite angry there with uh, certain attitude amongst maybe certain Aston Villa players. Maybe it's just all that anxiety throwing through. It's showing through. And uh, comparatively calm in the Everton bench, although uh, it must be seething, thinking that they've had a pretty good game here, but find themselves 2-0 down. McNally, well, both Matt and McNally jumped for that one, both missed it. brilliantly there. Ratcliffe, Mountfield, Wilson, it comes to Cotty, will try something from a long way out, and it's wide. Cotty has been uh, very well watched indeed by the man just going through the picture there now, Martin Keogh. Uh, just one occasion where at least Cotty does get a sight on goal, but the ball always lifting and going uh, and a good job Keown on Tony Cotty. Up goes McInally. Last minute of the game now. Keown again getting it clear. Reed versus Gage, not for the first time. Kubrick versus Bailey also not for the first time. And then Reed trying to release Adrian Heath, looking to get past Evans, and Everton get a corner. Wilson with the kick. Stoppages and injuries at the end of this game. Sharp for Everton. McCall gets it back again. McCall once more. Very well challenged again by Keown, who's been an absolute key defender for Aston Villa this afternoon. Not only in his work in subduing Potty. The sense of stability that he, Mountfield and Evans give to that defence. Snowden crossing it in. Heath being watched by Evans. 
and uh, Cowan's back to make the clearance. and knows that Villa are just now on the verge of maybe psychologically a very important first home league win. Three points certainly will be very welcome. Villa 15th in the trade table starting today. Great. Final whistle. Celebration at Villa Park. Those two fine goals bring their first league win here at the start of the season. That stunning volley in the first half by Tony Daly. And an equally well-struck shot by David Pack in the second half after Neville Southall had made two or three quite miraculous saves to hold Aston Villa at bay. Everton had so much of the game, it means they've won only one of their last six league games. But I think they played well enough here today to suggest that there's no talk of a crisis or there shouldn't be a good as a Fully committed game which ends in victory for Aston Villa in front of 26,636 fans. Aston Villa 2, Everton 0. We're on crutches at the moment I can see but you certainly weren't after 33 minutes today. Tell me about that amazing goal first off Tony. Well it started on the left and played well and it went down the right and Chris Price did exceptionally well got a cross in, took a deflection and I followed it in. As easy as that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you do make a habit of scoring fairly spectacular goals, don't you? Yeah, I've scored, most goals I've scored, you know, I haven't scored many, but when I do, I seem to fly in. Yeah. And it's been a very important week for you, hasn't it? That's right, yeah, I just celebrated my birthday, 21st birthday 21st. on Tuesday. Yeah. So it's, it's a good, good birthday for me, yeah. But you've also finished with, uh, is that plaster on there? Or no, it's just um, cotton wool and a crepe bandage. It's just a precautionary thing because um, early on in the first half I sprained my ankle, went down on my ankle and it was a bit sore so it's just precautionary more than anything. So it started in glory and finishes on <laughs> That's right, yeah. Good. Well That's done right. today though. Okay, thank you. Fantastic. Graham, how important was it to get off the mark and score that first home league win of the season? Well, I think it's very important for everybody at the club, the players particularly. They've been riding high in the league most of the season. Recently, as I said, they've been flying high as well. Roll. But Villa quickly responded through their man in form, Alan McInally. The first of his two goals coming just seven minutes later. McInally's form has been a revelation this season. His second goal, which soon followed, was even more impressive as Villa cruised on to a 3-1 win. Villa now at home to Ipswich. Stem from Tony Daly's corner after just three minutes. David Platt opened the night's account. The second was half an hour incoming. McAnally's strong run and cross found Birmingham wanting again. Ernie Gallagher made it two. Two minutes later, Villa were three up. Another corner, this time from Cowans, and Derek Mountfield provided the final touch. McAnally's recent goal touch hasn't left him. He notched number four as Villa scored three times in four minutes. Paul Birmingham had nothing to offer and it was no surprise when number five came. Alan Evans on the score sheet this time. In the second half, they eased off their only success courtesy of more Birmingham benevolence. It gave McAnally his second and Villa a 6-0 win. As you